Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Lakeville State of the City address or conversation, maybe we'll call it. Um, thank you all for coming this morning. It's great to have a great, turn, a large turnout. And um, Justin Miller and I are privileged to be able to speak on behalf of the city and share a little bit about what's been going on and what is going to be going on as we look toward the future. I just want to take a minute and just thank a number of elected or appointed officials for coming this morning. And maybe I'll just uh, go through the list and as I read your name, if you could stand and then we'll thank you for coming uh, with one applause at the end. Um, so my fellow city council members are here. Uh, council member Hellier, Wheeler, LeBeau, and Davis. I believe we're all here. Uh, Met council member Wendy Wolf is here. Dakota County Representative Commissioner Mary Liz Holberg is here. Uh, from the legislature, we have John Kosnick with us this morning. And from Independent School District 194, we have Bob Erickson and Judy Kelleher. Did I miss anybody, elected or appointed officials? Thank you folks for being here. One of the things we're gonna talk about this morning is partnerships and I'm grateful that you folks are here. We're all uh, working together on behalf of our city and so thank you for coming. Two and a half years ago, there was a person who was quoted to say, I truly love working at the local level of government. It's a, and Lakeville's a city that will allow me to grow as it grows itself. And uh, two and a half years ago, I had the privilege to be on city council and we as a city council interviewed a person for the job of city administrator. Justin Miller started with us January of 2015 and he prior to that worked in Mendota Heights as city administrator and prior to that Belkin Heights. So um, I'm grateful that Justin is here and uh, without further ado, we will bring him up here to the podium. Thank you, Mary Anderson. I need to start remembering what I say if it's going to be brought up two, year, two years later. So um, I echo Mary Anderson's comments. Thank you all for being here today. It's a great turnout. And I'm going to take a little bit of a look back, look over our past year, and, and celebrate some of our successes. And then we'll turn it over to Mary Anderson, and, and he'll take a look forward. Um, I would also like to recognize a few people. We have numerous staff in the room today, but I do see several department heads that are here. And hopefully, I'm not going to miss any. Uh, our finance director, Gerald Erickson. Community and Economic Development Director Dave Olson, uh, Liquor Operations Director Brenda Visnovec, Assistant City Administrator Alan Kennan, our Parks and Recreation Director John Hennan, Public Works Director Chris Petrie, and uh, Chief Long from the Police Department and Fire Chief Mike Meyer are here. So thank you all for being here as well. I'd like to give a special thanks before we get started too to our communications manager, Tierney Helmers. Uh, Tierney's joined us within the past year and has really brought a new energy and excitement to our communications department. She was very instrumental in putting this presentation together. So I thank her as well as Jim Schiffman who's behind the magic curtain over there and is broadcasting this today and we'll be putting it down on the, on the internet later as well. So, so um, 2016 was pretty busy. I think as you can see on this slide, it was very busy in regards to business development. Um, all of the companies on this slide represent either companies that opened, expanded, or had significant improvements in the past year. I think we're most proud of the fact that they stretch across all industries. Uh, we have retail in the downtown area along Interstate 35 and in the northwest part of town, industrial development and expansion in our Air Lake, Air Lake Industrial Park. And so growth across all sectors was a trend that we were happy to see it continue in 2016. That growth helped us see total building permit valuation of over $238 million in 2016. And that's a top three year for the city of Lakeville. So when you think about it, just in 2016 alone, over $238 million was invested in our community. And that only takes into account the physical building of the structures. It does not include machinery, equipment, or more importantly, the jobs that were all created due to that investment. 2017 is off to a very strong start as well. And with the numerous projects in the pipeline that Mayor Anderson's gonna talk about, this trend looks sure to continue. Of that 238 million that we just talked about, 40 million was due to commercial and industrial growth. So with all the houses you see popping around Lakeville, it'd be easy to assume that our development is all residential in nature. However, our commercial and industrial construction is very, very beneficial 
to diversifying our tax-based portfolio, if you will, and that all provides retail, dining, and employment options for residents and visitors alike. But as I alluded to, Lakeville is a rapidly growing city. In fact, Lakeville has been the number one home builder in the Twin Cities for the past four years, and that track record shows no sign of slowing down. In 2016, we approved nearly 500 units of new housing, the majority of which was single family in nature. The spike you see in 2015 was due mainly to the platting of a large, the Madame Avonlea project along Cedar Avenue. But you can also see that the types of housing that we're now developing is being spread across all types, including townhomes and apartments. One of the envisioned Lakeville community values that was adopted is to provide a home for all ages and stages of life. And with these new t housing huts being developed, we were certainly trying to reach that goal. So the Builders Association of Twin Cities puts out a monthly report, which then turns into an annual report. And as you can see, we are the number one home builder by quite a ways in 2016. More importantly though, through March, through March of 2017, which is typically our slowest quarter, we have already issued 103 single family permits this year, compared to 57 last year. So you can guess how this number is gonna look by the time we reach December of 2017. So we also saw the replacement in 2016 of a well-loved and I might say well-worn land of amazement. After over 20 years, the original playground, which was painstakingly built by hundreds of volunteers, and I think that volunteer effort might have been led by a certain county commissioner who's in the room today, um, that was replaced. And it was replaced with a version that new generations are going to remember as much as the ones that built the original. The new project cost over $360,000 but 277,000 of that was privately raised. Key supporters included $100,000 from Safety Signs, of which the playground is now named, $50,000 each from the Lakeville Rotary and, and post-consumer brands, and $10,000 from the Lakeville Lions Club, as well as hundreds of other individual contributions. We thank all the donors and volunteers who helped construct this playground over a weekend last September. But we didn't forget our four-legged friends either, and one of the more popular parks that we opened was the Ritter Farm Dog Park last fall. The five-acre park along, like I said, at Ritter has both areas for small and large breeds and is, has water stations at picnic tables as well. And I guess the dogs can eat at the picnic tables if, if they fit too, so. And then finally, we constructed our latest neighborhood park in the Summerlin neighborhood, which is just north of City Hall to accommodate the large Lennar development known as Summerlin. So the Lakeville Area Arts Center continues to be a hidden gem in our park and rec system, but as you can see, it, hidden is probably not the right term anymore. With over 50,000 visitors each year, this site continues to see year-over-year -year growth and is home to numerous shows, festivals, and classes, and I encourage all of you to check it out. Our Arts Center board and the Friends of the Lakeville Arts Center deserve our thanks for their vision, development, and continued support for this treasured asset. So if you're watching this on TV, and uh, you might now be watching this on one of two stations. So for the first time in history last year, the city approved a second cable franchise with Frontier Communications. So many times the city gets asked why we only choose one cable company or why we grant a monopoly, and that simply isn't the case. But with new technology, competing cable franchises can now existing in our markets with more financial certainty. And we're glad to have competition in this area. Both the charter and the Frontier agreements call for public and government access programming and we hope that you take the time to look at all the options that are now available. While probably not the most glamorous of city operations, we all depend on our public works department to maintain our streets, sewers, and utilities. You probably saw the two million gallon water tower being built uh, just north here of City Hall in Highview and Holyoke, but what you might not realize is that we also expanded the capacity of our water treatment facility, which was done mostly underground. And by doing this, it provided needed capacity for our growing city, but also delayed or maybe eliminated the need for us to have to build a second and very expensive water treatment facility. We probably rehabbed in Lakeville more streets over the past couple years than any state or any city in the state of Minnesota, with over 20 miles being repaired, and we expanded Dodd Boulevard to, or to four lanes from 185th down to Lakeville North High School, which greatly increased capacity and made much needed safety improvements. And then lastly, we realigned 172nd Street by Home Furniture and Perkins to allow for better traffic flow and increased development potential. With roughly 14 million in sales each year, our liquor operation is the largest municipal system in the state. 
Each year it helps keep our tax rate low by contributing money to pay for things such as snow plows, fire trucks, and debt service in our public safety facilities. They also sponsor numerous community events and are active in the Lakeville Path Coalition, which is a group of dedicated, which is a group that's dedicated to youth mental and chemical health issues. Our three stores are staffed by very dedicated sales teams. And yes, we will be open on the first Sunday that sales are available, which is Sunday, July 2nd. So. Our police and fire departments realize that public safety is job number one for the city of Lakeville, and the dedication and professionalism of, of these firefighters and police officers is second to none. The most visible aspects of their jobs are when they respond to incidents with lights and sirens, but as you can see, they take much pride in hosting station tours, attending community events, or shopping for those who are less fortunate during the holiday season. Chief Long will also tell you that mental health calls continue to increase for our police department, and they have started a unique program where officers who respond personally follow up after the, after the call and make sure that those residents are getting the resources that they need. And before I turn the podium over to Mary Anderson, I think it's appropriate to talk finances a little bit. Lakeville is just one of a few Dakota County cities that has seen our tax rate decrease year over year for the past five years. In fact, our tax rate is now within one-tenth of 1% 1 of the lowest rate in the county, and that difference is shrinking every year. We have accomplished this through prudent property tax restraint, proper planning, and fostering an economic development climate that has allowed our tax base to increase year after year. There are many reasons why people choose to live and invest in Lakeville, and keeping our tax rate low is just one of the advantages that we can offer. I hope you enjoyed this look back over 2016, and now join me in watching this short video that will help us transition to a look forward by Mayor Doug Anderson. Thank you. Let's say thanks to Jim and Tierney and the staff for putting that together. Well, on behalf of the whole city council, it's my privilege to talk a little bit about where are we headed and the work that's going on day in and day out from a council standpoint and a staff standpoint. So one of our major projects this year and actually next year as well is the planning process and getting involved with the 2018 comprehensive plan. We do an update every 10 years, uh, comprehensive plan. That's part of the Met Metropolitan Council work. Plan touches practically every aspect of our city. And so you see a number of our plans listed here. This is not an all-inclusive list. There's a lot of different ways that this planning process integrates in almost everything that we do. One of the exciting parts of the planning process is that this is an opportunity for our citizens to be engaged in the city. So there's going to be a wealth of opportunity to do that. We've got meetings that will be announced soon. Maybe they're already announced on the website. I'm not sure. That will be announced soon, uh, community meetings, so that you can come, you can learn more about the planning process and offer your input and your insights. This is the first year, because of technology advances, that we'll be able to do some work and engage people on social media. And so we're still, the staff is still looking at ways that we can do that. So that'll be exciting to see how that gets used. We have uh, the opportunity to make sure as we do our plan that we meet the requirements that the Met Council places upon us. 
Sometimes there's confusion about this, uh, but there are a few requirements that we need to meet. There's also a lot of wishes that the Met Council has in their Thrive 2040 plan. We don't necessarily meet, need to meet every one of those wishes, but we need to be responsive and respectful of their, their planning process. But ultimately, there are certain requirements we need to meet and we will do that. And then, as I mentioned, the planning process will, will roll out here over the next year and a half to two years. Other planning processes that we have in place, other things that are going on, relate to parks. Um, this year we will be engaging our citizens in a process to look at what should Antlers Park look like in the future. Uh, we were privileged to be able to acquire additional land from Mr. Warwick and, and look at expanding Antlers Park. So that work will begin to unfold. This year we have a consultant that will work with us to pull that together and again we will have citizens that will uh, we will ask for your involvement in that process. A couple other things that are going on that are very exciting in terms of our parks. Uh, Justin Miller mentioned earlier the dog park and that was a big change for us, a new addition to our park system. We've got two additional new additions that are coming online this year. One is mountain biking and, and actually fat tire biking in the wintertime. We're excited. And there was a new organization that was formed, the Lakeville Cycling Association. They have raised over $37,000 through their work, and along with city funds, uh, we will be building trails. The work has already begun out in the park, out by Casperson, and, and it's exciting to be adding additional trails. I believe it's about five miles of trails that will be put in. This not only just supports that local club, but it supports our schools. There's mountain bike teams or clubs or whatever that will be using those trails as well as a lot of our citizens are excited for that to come online. And then finally, I don't play pickleball, but I know some of my neighbors do, and they're excited about having another pickleball court. It's an, uh, becoming a, an increasingly popular sport, and so we're excited to add another court. A couple major road construction projects are coming up this year. Uh, the first is that we'll, we're looking at, and we've been working with the Downtown Lakeville Business Association and businesses to do some improvements downtown. Uh, the road needed to be updated and so along with that, we put together a project that basically is a streetscape project. This might be a little tough to see on the screen in terms of details, but you certainly can go to the website, take a look at all the details. We are excited uh, to, to be working on this project. It will start right after Panaprog, and I know it's gonna be an inconvenience for the businesses and we ask for your patience and for those of us that uh, take advantage of those businesses, please get down and shop there, regardless of the fact that the road is under construction. Uh, it will be a short amount of time, and then we're excited to have the new uh, roadway put in place. Another aspect of that is some new signage for downtown. We're excited for that as well. Another major project that's starting this summer is related to Highway 50. It seems like about every couple of years we're doing another road construction project on Highway 50. A couple years ago, it was the roundabout. This year, the project starts uh, right along from Dodd through Ipava up to the roundabout. And it's a two-stage project. There's another citizen meeting. I think the final citizen meeting is this coming Tuesday at Kenwood Trail Middle School to, uh, to talk about this project and answer any questions. This project will start this summer as well with the backage road work and then after Panaprog, the main work will start and the road will be closed from Dodd over toward Ipava and maybe over to Jaguar uh, for the first phase of that project this year. As far as other projects, uh, Justin Miller talked about looking at housing for all ages and stages of life. We've got a number of housing projects, multifamily projects that are underway, Lakeville Point Department, Avonlea Village Green apartment over off of Cedar and additional senior housing coming in with Kingsley Place senior apartment. And commercial development. Our trend continues with a lot of commercial development going on. We're excited to announce there's a development coming in on the east side of Cedar, south of County Road 70. Uh, Launch Park Lakeville is a new project 286,000 square foot warehouse office building facility. 
Uh, Menasha will be expanding as well as there'll be some additional space there for another business and we're excited for that project to come online in that area of Air Lake Industrial Park. There's some additional planning work that, that is underway. The county is working on east-west studies as far as roadway systems and we're excited that County Road 70 is part of that, pro uh, part of that planning process. County Road 70 is an important road, roadway for us and we'd like to get a final plan in place in terms of improvement of that road for once and for all. So we're not doing it in little small increments with turn lanes one at a time. So uh, this is, uh, when this work is done, we're excited to work with the county and, and get that final plan in place. And then along with the uh, comprehensive planning process, we will be looking at updating the downtown development guide uh, with the DLBA. I mentioned partnerships earlier. Thank you for attending, those of you that are here. Uh, from some of our partners and uh, partnerships are really important and and in addition volunteers are really important and when you step back and really take a look at how we as a city function we could never function without the volunteers and without the partnerships to accomplish the work that we need to do to keep our city great and so here this is again not an all-inclusive list uh, we've tried to pick up some of the logos uh, in terms of all the partnership has all the partnerships we have from Lakeville Arenas uh, to the Path Coalition to the police chaplains, and and we are privileged to have this type of activity and interest and commitment on behalf of our citizens and organizations in our city to work together. Uh, I do want to highlight the fact that we do have citizen committees related to the governance structure of our city whether it's the Financial Advisory Committee or Planning Commission or certain task forces. We have a task force that will just start meeting tomorrow in terms of indoor athletic facilities. Uh, we also are looking at starting up a task force as, as far as broad range technology planning for the future. We hope to start that up soon. Just a little bit of a plug for, for uh, some opportunities to volunteer. We are still looking for people to volunteer and participate in the technology committee, the technology task force. It's a, it's a one time, it's not a long term commitment, but we are looking for people that have technology background to participate in that group. And we hope to get that group started in the next month. So if you have an interest in that, we'd appreciate hearing from you soon. The other uh, positions that we have open are some alternate positions on certain city committees, the financial advisory committee, the planning commission are two where we have alternate positions that are open. I believe we also have one on the Parks and Natural Resources Committee. So if you are interested in those positions, please contact us as soon as possible as well. Of course, one of the things as a city council that we get involved in is policy conversations and conversations about things going on around the city. And, and this is a listing of a number of activities that are upcoming as we look at the year. We're currently in some discussion around food trucks and at our work session at the end of the month we will having an, another conversation in terms of food truck ordinances in our city. And so if you have an interest in that, I encourage you to come to the work session at the end of the month and share your thoughts with us as we continue to work with the planning commission and with staff in terms of what the, what's the right answer for us in terms of uh, food truck businesses in our city. Backyard bees. Uh, is an interesting topic. We have uh, an awesome group of students that have been educating us on honeybees and we're excited to be continuing that discussion forward. The Planning Commission as well has been involved in this and we look forward to coming to a conclusion soon. Uh, we had a, our latest conversation at a work session and we raised some questions and they're doing some additional research for us in terms of uh, honeybees and educating all of us about uh, the life of a honeybee and how they can be potentially a good community member for us for the future. And then we get to a number of other kind of policy questions. The uh, Economic Development Commission is gonna be doing some discussion and looking into our tax increment financing policy. We do have a current policy and we're looking at possibly tweaking that and focusing that as we go toward the future. We, uh, as part of the comprehensive planning process, we will be doing a financial review and the Financial Advisory Committee will be working with the Parks Committee to take a look at their plan and 
some alternatives and thinking around how do we finance our parks. Every year we do a budget process, whether it be capital improvements, the CIP plan, or the actual operating budget, and we'll be working on that. And that remains important, as, as Justin Miller spoke about. We are very committed to keep our tax rate low, um, but yet provide efficient and effective services and meet the needs of our community. Uh, sometimes that creates some tension because we need to make choices, uh, but we as your council will continue to do the best job we can to make those choices uh, to the best of our ability. And then I already mentioned the last two task forces. I'd like to close just with a couple personal comments. Um, first off, I neglected to uh, introduce earlier a really important person that's uh, important to me anyway, and that's my wife, Deb, who is sitting here, as well as my mother-in-law, Martha, is here. And uh, they are very supportive, and they bring a lot of history to my ability to be in the position I have the privilege to serve in. And so I'm grateful that they're here this morning. I'm uh, super thankful to have the privilege to serve as mayor. And uh, it's really a blessing from regional mayor's meetings to ribbon cuttings. What a thrill it is to represent our city and to have the opportunity to talk about what we all do together uh, to make this city a great place to live and operate our businesses and to grow. As a council, at the start of the year, we had a little three-hour retreat, and we did some planning, and we talked about, uh, from each of us, what our perspectives were in terms of what are some of the important things we wanted to try to accomplish this year. Uh, of course, a few things ended up on the list, like the comprehensive plan and some of the things we've already talked about. But there was roughly about 10 things on that list when we got done with it. One of those we've already completed, and that was to take a vote and, and adjust the mayoral term to four years, and I'm grateful that that has occurred. Um, there's a couple things on that list that relate to the budget process and uh, things we wanted that council members wanted to take a look at as we make some priority decisions in terms of how we invest the funds that we're privileged to steward. And so those will be coming up and we will work on those this summer and fall as we get into that process. And then there was eight, seven, eight other things on that list um, that are all in process, all the way from the comprehensive plan to the indoor recreational facility task force to some other things. So I think we are well on our way from my perspective uh, to move forward the agendas that, that our council has uh, put in place. And I'm excited about how we are advancing things forward. So again, thank you for, for being here this morning. It is a privilege to serve, and please keep your comments and questions coming. And speaking of questions, Mr. Miller is going to come back up here, and we're happy to entertain your questions at this time. Thank you very much. Any questions? <clears throat> Don't all go at once. Easy crowd. Any, uh, one last chance, any questions? Otherwise, we'll be around. Feel free to ask staff. Thank you, staff, for being here this morning. Uh, feel free to ask staff or catch up with one of us council members if you have a question to talk about. Thank you so much for being here.